Want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. That's an old saying, but it's true as ever. As you're about to find out, Tom O'Connell is next. This is a dash of grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things. Now, podcasting from Spire to leaders in local communities like yours, here is Brian Leflock. And let's get cooking. I am excited for you to meet our guest today on Dash of Grit. Grit is about overcoming hurdles and challenges, and quite often, you don't expect them to come. We don't go out on our day's work and say, ah, what kind of trouble am I going to run into today? We expect things to be pretty smooth, pretty even, kind of what we anticipated. Sometimes it's not. And when I bring up the term former pastor, I think everyone kind of goes, okay, there's probably a story there. And that's what we're going to talk about today with Tom O'Connell. He's the executive director currently at Habitat for Humanity of Medina County. He's also a former senior pastor at Brunswick's Hope Church. And I'm excited for you to meet Tom O'Connell today on Dash of Grit. Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Thanks. You know, it, it, the pleasure is all mine. And I'm, I'm excited for you to talk about uh, transition. You know, and 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 the the grit that comes because because I think that a lot of people think that they're in their road and they're heading their direction and life is set and good and you know the the future is mapped out, but mm-hmm. yet that's not the way it is and, and it never happens that way and we always find ourselves in spots and so hopefully you can help talk some people through that a little bit yeah. today. Yeah, looking forward to it. Before mm-hmm. we get to that, though, you are the executive director of Habitat for Humanity, and you're doing amazing things. And i that's how I met you. And mm-hmm. I'm just really thrilled for you to share some success, some stories of what's happening well, either with Tom O'Connell or with what the, the work that you're doing, the good work that you're doing with Habitat for Humanity. Oh, I appreciate that, Brian. Thanks. Yeah, so I've been uh, the executive director of Habitat for Humanity here in Medina County for the last three years. I uh, just celebrated my three-year anniversary, I think it was back in April of 2022. So yeah, it's been a whirlwind uh, these last three years. I didn't come with a Habitat uh, background, a construction background, um, but uh, yeah, I've learned a lot over these three years. Um, just recently, in April, uh, so just a few months ago, we were able to finish um, and dedicate when we present the keys to a new home to the homeowner. Uh, we call it dedicating the home, and uh, we were able to dedicate our 45th home uh, here in Medina County, uh, down in Wadsworth. Um, as we wow. finished that house, we are nearing completion, even as you and I record this podcast, of another home, our 46th home in Brunswick. Uh, Ohio. So um, been fortunate to build several homes um, in Brunswick and we'll be finishing another home here um, actually th- at the end of July. Uh, our plan is we have a dedication on the calendar. Yeah. And and so uh, part of showing grit is knowing that there's reward on the other side. How does that feel to know that you've impacted the lives even of one person, but 45 sure. people in that way? Tell me about that, that yeah. reward. Yeah, it, it's an amazing feeling. Um, you know, each each home dedication is unique because they're all different individuals or families, different people. Um, in each one, you take away, uh, you feel significance uh, personally as an organization. Um, just to even think of the most recent one in Wadsworth. Uh, we always allow the homeowner to you know talk as, as part of the dedication ceremony and. You know, some are very scripted, some are off the cuff, um, and this 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 homeowner, um, again, a, a a single mom and her high school age son, uh, are now living there. The homeowners, and she talked about very clearly with the group that was gathered there in her kitchen slash living room um, that day. She talked about how when she came in our program, or even before she came in our program, she honestly never thought she would be a homeowner. And honestly, she didn't, des- she didn't deserve to be a homeowner. Yeah. So she was in our pro in our program a few years and, you know, our program isn't, uh, isn't an easy one necessarily. You know, it's, they're doing volunteer hours on other people's homes being built. They're volunteering here at our restore. Um, and it's not easy. Um, mm. you know, the it requires time, some grit too, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 To keep going. And our our process isn't quick. You know, as I said, she was in our program for a few years. So this isn't you're approved and four months later you get a house or six months later you get a house. It's it's a couple, you know, her time frame was around a couple of years. So anyway, so she gets to the end of her talk and she just said, 
as I've gone through this whole process and now I'm holding these keys, um, it will soon be, you know, I'll sign the mortgage next week and own this home. She said, You're, this program has given me a greater uh, self-confidence as a woman, as a mom, um, and as a community member. And I feel stronger as a person because of what I've gone through, this program that I've gone through. Um, so I, you know, those are things we talk about in, in, in board meetings and staff meetings about what, how we're helping people, you know, develop as people, but to hear a homeowner, you know, that I didn't prompt her with that. She on yeah. her own articulated that, you know, feeling or experience with those who were there that day, you know, it's, it's just amazing. Um, and you know, you know, she, she, like many of our, uh, homeowners are single parents. Um, you know, it's obviously changing her life, but it's also going to change the, you know, the sons and the daughters yeah. and the generations, potential grandkids and, you know, just home ownership. It, it is, it is life-changing, um, yeah. you know, and opens, opens numerous doors that, you know, uh, that uh, unlike any, in any other um, opportunity. And and I think we're going to get to the part where you can talk about how that's made a, a significant impact in your life. But I can hear just real quickly, I can hear people on the other end of the microphone and the other end of the speakers. Ah, they're just giving away free houses. Like that's, <laughs> that's what people, some people think, and it's that's not true. the truth right. is that this right. person had to do the work, show the grit, earn this opportunity to, to kind of, to rebuild her own self with a little bit of help. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get that question a lot about I homes. Are homes are they free homes? And they're not. Um, th th these homeowners are paying a mortgage. Um, it is different than you know, maybe a traditional sure. mortgage in that Habitat's philosophy is in practice is it's, it's zero interest. Uh, that's been from day one yep. back in the it's part mid, of the program. Yeah. Mid 70s yep. when it was started down in Georgia. Um, so zero interest loans. Um, and it makes it affordable. It's affordable yeah. home ownership. So, and even before they get to signing the mortgage, as I said, the, these individuals, whether it's a single parent, co-parent situation, or, you know, two, two people in the relationship, um, they're doing volunteer hours, hundreds of volunteer hours, you know, to complete our program. And they're helping other people's homes be built before their house is built. They're you know, helping stock our shelves here at the ReStore. Um, yeah, they're putting in a lot of hours. So what I'd like to, what we internally here at our organization, and I know Habitat in general, the, a lot of some of the terminology we use uh, to remind us that we're not doing this for these people, these individuals or families. Uh, we are doing it with them. Um, they are, we're partners in this journey together um, that, you know, we're committing things, Habitat is, they're committing things to us. And together, we're going to, we're going to go on this journey together. And at the end, the goal is, you know, you're going to be a homeowner because of the work you've put in. Um, so yeah, these, these are not free uh, by any stretch of the imagination homes. Yeah. It's interesting. Some of the times that we've done this show and I've done, and we've talked about how did you overcome that challenge? Very rarely, if ever, is it something someone did on their own. Hmm. They have help. Someone help. gives them a help, a handout or a hand up or yeah. whatever it yeah. might be to get hmm. the tires a little bit. I mean, if you're stuck and you're driving the wheel, you can't push. Like, you, 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 sometimes it takes a couple. And so Habitat for Humanity comes alongside people who are trying to get the thing done, need a hand. Mm -hmm. You're that hand, but they have to earn it. And so um, good for you. And I know how much that means to you because you got into a career choice to make a difference in people's lives. That's why people go into uh, uh, the Christian, mm -hmm. the faith and services mm -hmm. and things of that sort. And mm -hmm. I know that's what you wanted to do, but you didn't see it this way. And so let's, let's talk about uh, your journey and let's yeah. talk about transition and how you overcame some hurdles that came along the way and had to show some grit. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, high school really, you know, as every high school student, you know, maybe not every, but most, you know, you're trying to figure out what the next step is after graduation. Um, and my, I grew up in a very religious home. Um, my, my parents took me and my sisters to church, uh, at a very influential age. Um, uh, our local church hired a youth pastor, um, to work at the church and he was very impactful in my life and in many of my friends' uh, lives. So, you know, in high school, I, I, I had the, you know, I would have called it probably a calling then, but mm -hmm. just a desire to do the same for other people, help other people. And I actually, the plan was I, I was going to be a, I wanted to be a youth pastor, like okay. the gentleman who impacted my life. Um, so 
finished high school, got accepted to a Bible college just outside of New York City, um, went there, got my uh, four-year degree, a bachelor's degree in youth ministry, uh, met my uh, future wife uh, while I was there. We got married uh, soon after college was done, school was done, and uh, we moved uh, to Ohio. Um, She was from Northeast Ohio, the Canton area. Um, So she was from this area. I was not. I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, So moved to Ohio uh, on the, um, to Lodi, uh, Medina County, uh, Lodi, Ohio. And we had the opportunity to help start a church. Um, That wasn't the plan in college. Again, it was to be a youth pastor, work with high school, middle school students. And, um, but there was a job opportunity, uh, to help get a church going and accepted the job. This small group of people took a chance on me, (laughs) um, really us, me and my wife, um, never had, I'd never pastored a church before, never started a church before, wasn't on my resume, gave me a chance. And, um, you know, lo and behold, everything came together and the church got off the ground and we were there for 10 years, um, had all of our children there, our four children. And then, um, in 2011, a great opportunity presented itself to move to the Northern end of the County to Brunswick, uh, to join uh, another church, uh, team or staff there, um, larger church than what I was. And I became the third, um, member of the pastoral team, going back actually to do youth ministry, uh, what my degree was in. (laughs) And so did that for a few years. And then our leadership team at the church uh, went through some leadership transitions or changes, I should say, due to uh, health issues with our senior leader. So he had to step away from work due to some health concerns. Um, And our staff realigned. I went into a more senior level role at that time, did that for about a year. And then uh, I was presented with the opportunity to become the the lead pastor or senior pastor of that church um, and did that um, for the last two years. uh, I was at that church in Brunswick. Okay. So that sounds like a very easy path. Everything (laughs) just fell right in line for Tom O'Connell. Everything just right along. You went for one thing, ended up with another, transferred to another, and life is looking yeah. Rosie, are you are you happy at this point of how it's turned out, even though it wasn't the way you envisioned it? Are you in, in at this point in your life? Are you solid? And like, yeah, I'm killing it. Yeah. I mean, in many ways, going to that, you know, that 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 church in Brunswick, again, it was a larger congregation, larger pastoral team, larger budget, all of those. So in that in my field at the time, um, you know, as a you know, I was late 30s at the time, you know, that's a that's a dream job. I mean, that's what you hope for. That's actually in some ways it was kind of if you use the latter terminology, it was probably going up the ladder, so to speak, faster than I had anticipated. So mm-hmm. yeah, we were very happy. I was very happy in that role. Our uh, you know, our family was doing well. We immersed ourselves in the Brunswick community. Um and yeah, life was good. Life was mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Yeah. So, you know, as with, as with, I think any, you know, I don't know if it's just my personality, but, you know, for me, information is, is like gold. Um, you know, I, I love reading. I love studying. I love knowledge. I love, I just try and gather knowledge, I should say. So, you know, in my role, you know, I rub shoulders with a lot of different people, people who believe some of the same things I do, people who don't believe some of the same things I do. And, you know, and then, you know, life has those curveballs at you, ups and down, you know, challenges. And so I start, you know, hearing, uh, I have people I'm rubbing shoulders with talking about, you know, maybe different ways to do church or different beliefs. And, you know, so I start reading some things and talking to some people and just doing some kind of self-exploration. And, and, and in 2018 or, two, excuse me, 2017, uh, soon after I became um, the senior pastor of, of that church in Brunswick, uh, our family went through and our church went through a pretty uh, significant challenge um, that, you know, we don't really need to get into today, but just pretty significant challenge uh, personally and in our church. And that, honestly, that that event kind of shook me uh, in our family, probably to its core. And that that event was a bit of a catalyst kind of really, I was already exploring things and talking about things or wrestling through things, but that event was like, it poured gasoline on that. And it was just like more and more. So, so I finished, you know, 17 
And then early in 18 is when it kind of all got to a point where I knew I had questions. I knew I had things I needed to explore more and I couldn't do that fully in that role. But how does that, so so we all plan for, for what we think the future is going to be. And you were on that plan and doing the thing and doing the calling and all of a sudden you either all of a sudden, not overnight, whatever, but you realize you get to a point where you're like, hold on. I might not be where I'm meant to be. Yeah. How does that make you feel at that point? I, I want to see if it's similar to others that are listening today. What, what are you thinking? No, I'm going to ignore this. I'm going to fight against it. I know this is where I'm meant to be. Or are, are you scared? What, how are you feeling at that point? Yeah. So it's probably all those, uh, Brian, if I'm honest, I mean, there's fear because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a I, I don't make quick decisions or rash decisions. I, I, you know, I, I like, having a plan, you know, maybe not on paper, but okay, you know, here's going to be the next five years and here's what I'm going to do. And here's what our family's going to do. And, you know, and, and again, I, my, my career, my, my uh, education, my career so far up to that point had all been in that kind of certain stream or role, you know? So yeah, that's the plan. But now, you know, so there's fear, like, I don't know what's going to be next. Um, And, and at the same time though, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. I love routine. I love the same, you know, I, you know, yeah. I remember taking a, um, a, a kind of a personality assessment or, or uh, back in college. And it talked about how, like, you just, you're kind of faithful, you know, you just yeah. keep your head down and you get things done. And even when it's hard, you keep going. And we need more and, people and like that. That's, yeah. that's in many ways who I am. You know, yeah. I, I just kind of keep it going, you know, I keep going and, so, um, you know, I think for me, where those two kind of the fear of like, I don't know what I would do because this is all I've ever done. Yeah. Um, my resume is full of this type of career. Yeah. Who's going to hire me? I have, I have, you know, uh, I, I have a wife, I have four children and I know they're getting older and they're getting more expensive. So, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you know, pay for all the things we have, you know? Um, so there's that reality, but then there's, you know, I need, I, I, part of me is like, maybe I just keep going. But I think those two kind of came to a head where it was really honest, probably just looking internally. And I knew on the inside, like I wasn't happy. I wasn't, you know, not that happiness is the end all. I, I don't, I don't believe, but I do think as you, as you get to know yourself more, like your soul, your inside, whatever you want to call it, your spirit, whatever you maybe want to call it, like it's communicating to us. And I think, yeah. you know, as I listened more to me inside, like I knew, you know, in some ways my soul was like slowly dying, you know, in this, not that things were bad, you know, again, I was a very good position, very good role, Yeah, but I just knew to keep going, I would continue to slowly die on the inside. And I just had to make a change. But the alternative to making the change is to continue to let it slide because, or let it die because you don't have anything lined up. Right. Tom, if I'm, if I'm understanding this, this right. So here you are dying inside, realizing you're dying inside, telling yourself that you're not because Mm -hmm. you've got bills to pay and family to take care of. Yeah. And so you're lying to yourself, but you know, the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And then to give the story away here, you, you leave. I resigned. Yeah. So I announced my resignation, um, in the fall of uh, 20 or uh, 2018. What'd your Um, wife say? Uh, she was on board. Honestly, yeah. I think she was probably uh, ready to make the change earlier yeah. than I she was. She knew you were dying inside you. I get it. <laughs> she, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yep. uh, so I announced my resignation. There was a about a five six week um, period time time in between when I announced my resignation to when I actually finished uh, working at the church. So. Yeah, it was um, it was kind of reinventing myself um, over the. I mean, even leading up to that, but especially when the announcement was made that okay, I got to get a job. So yeah, it's it's writing a resume, finding the right people to help me write a resume because uh, you know you're aware that you know there's a fine art to writing a resume, yeah. writing it well. Yeah. So finding those people once that's done, or even as that's being done, it's networking with anyone I know that you know, has connections, knows people, knows people who know people. Um, I, I knew I probably wouldn't land a kind of my permanent job or a job I want to do long-term right out of the gate. Um, So I, 
you know, working in within my network, I, I knew the owners of a local appliance company here in Medina County, reached out to them, told them the story and said, um, I'm going to need a job on this day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you have anything? And they graciously did. And and I I was able to pick up a you know a job with them uh, while and I was honest that I'm going to keep looking and and I yeah. did and lo and behold one of the networking meetings I had was with a board member of Habitat for Humanity here in Medina County I didn't know it at the time that they were on the board here but circumstances changed some jobs opened up at Habitat and she told me about a job and I shared my resume with the then executive director of Habitat here in Medina and uh, led to an interview and led to being hired at the end of um, 2018 to manage the restore. And so by listening to your heart, doing your thing, you got onto the right path and the thing that was meant to happen happened at least up Mm -hmm. to now. And, and real quickly though, how soon before you were, your stomach was turning over saying I made the wrong choice. (laughs) That's it. I mean, probably day one. Yeah. I mean, it's this natural, like, you know, what am I going to do? You like, call I, him back. Can I life. come back? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. my temporary job, or I call it temporary. It was a real job. It was a yeah, you know, know. full-time job, but, but transitional jobs, probably a better way to say it, yeah. um, was delivering appliances. And, yeah. wow. you know, I, I'm not, you know, not that I'm, I don't consider myself old, but I, I'm not, I wasn't young either at the same time. And, you know, delivering refrigerators and stoves and washer dryers and, you know, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, five, five, six days a week was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, so numerous yeah. times on that, do- on that delivery truck, as we're navigating through Medina County, Cuyahoga County, it was, oh boy, did I make the right decision? <laughs> yeah. But if I'm honest at the same time, I think there was, even though it was hard, there was a part of me that knew it was content that this was the right decision. Um, I knew it, yeah, it was the right decision and, you know, we'll get through this. I don't know what's on the other side. I, I really don't, but, but we'll get through this. And, and that's even, you know, it was a change of schedule on our family and all of that. And, and, you know, it, even as hard as those adjustments were, we all knew it was the right decision. And it just kind of, flowed even in the new routines and schedules and and all of that. So and is that more is that more faith or is that more confidence? Uh I think it's both. I yeah. think it's a faith that you know we're stepping the right into the thing's unknown. gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we're we're we know this is what we're supposed to do. And um and and you know I think confidence in that like I was working at it. Um, I've told I've had the opportunity over the last three years to talk to some people that are going through maybe not a same career change from what I was doing to, you know, working with the, this nonprofit, but they're going through a career change. And, you know, and I, and I've said to find a job, you know, has to become your job like that. It's not a, even though there's so much available, <laughs> you know, especially today, yeah. um, you still has to become your job. You know, yeah. you have to make phone calls, you have to send emails, you have to, you know, follow up with people. It, it, it has to be, it's work. To find and so, so now you're in the unique position to share with others the the fruits of that faith and confidence and finding the job, making your job. Now you're making a huge difference in a way that that is is life giving to you because you took that step. The Dash of Grit podcast is brought to you by Spire. Spire creates results driven digital marketing and websites that help companies grow. Are you ready to break through the barriers that hold your company back? Take your growth higher with Spire. Learn more at spiread.com. Tell yeah. folks a little bit about the the benefits, like the the great thing that's happened in your life because you you jumped out of the the boat a little bit. Yeah, so I think one of the you know one of the benefits that comes to mind immediately is you learn a lot about yourself. Um, you know, I one of the doubts I had um, leaving. Uh, being a full-time uh, pastor and and moving into a different career, there were some doubts of could I be would I be a good leader in a different environment? different role, different job, um, you know, because that's all I'd ever done. 17 years that that was where I had been a leader, done the job. And, and in, in some ways, not that it was easy, but like I, I had tracks to run on, you know, I knew kind of how the job was supposed to be done going into a different career job, work environment. It's all brand new. So, so I've learned a lot about myself um, that, you know, a lot of the leadership skills and traits and or experiences you I learned over those 17 years, they do translate 
um, you know, a lot of them do translate into what I do here day in and day out. I get to do them differently yeah. and in different settings and in different ways. But, you know, in some ways I, you know, being a pastor is really, as you said, I think earlier, Brian, it's about caring for people. It's about helping people. Um, what I get to do day in and day out here at Habitat, it's about people. We're in, I, I tell myself and our team and we're in the people business. We work with people, uh, families, individuals, um, and so, but you learn a lot about yourself, um, how you do, how you can do that. You can do that. Um, you also learn a lot of new skills <laughs> that you can learn new things. You know, I mean, the old thing, you know, the old, what adage, you can't teach a dog new tricks. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you can, yeah, you, can. You, you can, can. I mean, like I, you know, going into the, in this job now with Habitat, like I have to, I, I've learned so much over these last three years and continue to learn so much, you know, about mortgages and debt yeah. to income ratios and, you know, all of that. I, I didn't, I mean, I was a homeowner before this, but like yeah. I paid my mortgage and, you know, it was serviced. It was taken care of. Yeah. Now I know how that happens, you yeah. know, because we yeah. do it. Um, so there's a lot of new things that I had never, you know, uh, was I a fundraiser in, in my previous job? Yes. I, I had sure. to raise money, sure, but not to the extent I have to hear in not this job. Way. So yeah. I'm learning that all over again, how to, you know, do that well. So, so yeah, I learned a lot about myself and you learn, you can learn new skills and leadership traits and all of that. My, the, uh, the owner of Spire, Jeremy Harrison, I told him once, uh, Hey, you can't teach an old dog, new tricks. This is the way, <laughs> this is the way Brian does it. This is yeah. the way you're just going to deal with it. He says, one, you can teach an old dog, new tricks. And two, you're not a dog. <laughs> That's what he told me. <laughs> I'm like, That's true. That's okay. True. <laughs> I guess you're right there. Uh, before, before we ask, I want to ask one final question as we run out of yeah. time here a little bit, yeah. but uh, if someone wanted to reach out to you a little bit about your story, about your journey, maybe they're going through some of the same things and want to talk or even know more about Habitat for Humanity sure. um, in the Dining County, how would they do that? Yeah. So if they want to, if we ever want to connect, and as I said, as I shared earlier, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people about transitions and all that, but yeah, so I'm willing to talk with anyone, help anyone I can learn based on what I've learned. Um, um, my email is T O'Connell at medinahabitat.org. It's on our website as well, um, which is medinahabitat.org. That's also a place if someone wants to learn more about what we're doing, see pictures of our current builds, uh, that we have going on, events coming up. Um, just learn about Habitat. Uh, MedinaHabitat.org is the place. We push a lot out through social media on our Facebook page, Instagram page. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, try to share a lot about Habitat um, and that uh, platform as well. So, yeah. As we wrap this up with Tom O'Connell, the executive director of uh, Habitat for Humanity in Medina County, you've been there, you've done it. There are people listening in the car right now or on a morning jog that are heading to work in a job that they used to love and now feel stuck. Uh, what would you tell them? Don't be afraid of change. Yeah. Don't be afraid of change. Yeah. Trust your gut too. Trust your gut. Tom O'Connell. Trust your gut. Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity of Medina County. I love that. I love it more than you know. And I appreciate your sharing that. I think it is probably the most gritty thing you can do mm -hmm. is yep. trust what the inside is telling you. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Congratulations on showing it. And I'm, I'm thrilled for you and what you're doing. I'm thrilled for the people of Medina County uh, and the communities that are benefiting from Habitat for Humanity and the work that you're doing there and your team. Keep it up. Well thank done. You. And thank you for joining us on A Dash of Grit. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Tom O'Connell, Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity in Medina County, is on Dash of Grit today. Lots of other folks have been on in the past, and you can see all of those at dashofgrit.com uh, or where you find podcasts. And we'll do it next week, too. Until then, stay gritty and win the day. This is a Dash of Grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things.